Continuing to episode 7, we are shown the moments when Rei begins to fall in love with Rakuro. Initially, Rei happened to see Rakuro and his friend chatting on their way to school. Rakuro joyfully talked about a trashy game he was playing. At that time, Rei only knew Rakuro as someone who always laughed and seemed happy. And suddenly, Rei became interested in him. She started looking for Rakuro and began secretly observing him at the game store. Unfortunately, when Rei tried to talk to Rakuro, she always failed. Someday, Rei hopes to be able to speak with Rakuro. She doesn't mind even if she has to do it through a game. Back to the present, Rei or Singer Zero, who knows that Sunraku is being targeted by another player, wants to use this opportunity to talk to him. Unfortunately, because Sunraku doesn't know who Siger Zero is, he becomes suspicious of the player in front of him. At least Sunraku knows that Siger Zero is not part of a player-killing conspiracy. However, he remains cautious if Siger Zero is targeting the unique scenario he is experiencing. On the other hand, the dying Animalia reveals her secret weapon. She still has a suicide magic spell that requires mastery of spells and a single digit remaining life. Arthur feels very troubled, especially since her Jirami Karma doll has already been used up. In this situation, she cannot ward off magic anymore. By using that spell, Anna Melia can use her own life to trigger instant death reduction. Arthur Pencil then also collapses along with Anna Melia. In the process of that magic, the three killer players panic because Arthur is no longer there. Sunraku promptly instructs Emil to prepare a teleportation gate. Sunraku will use this chaos to escape. Suddenly, Sunraku climbs onto the sword of Sicker Zero, steps on her head, and jumps over the three player killers. Fortunately, Siger Zero prevents the three player killers who are trying to chase Sunraku. Even though Sunraku doesn't know whether Siger Zero is a friend or foe, he will remember her name as a token of gratitude. After that, the three player killers feel something strange about Siger Zero. Somehow, for a moment, she seems completely still. It turns out that Siger Zero is reliving the image and words of Sunraku when he jumped over her. She feels very happy because Sunraku finally spoke to her. When the three player killers want to take advantage of this opportunity to defeat her, Siger Zero gets angry because, thanks to them, she can't talk to Sunraku for a longer time. One of them is immediately killed with a single slash, and it seems that the remaining two killers will experience the same fate. Sunraku and Emil finally arrive in Rabatuza. Sunraku laughs with satisfaction because he can finally escape. Whoever was chasing him surely won't be able to catch up to this point. Before this, there was a panic-inducing incident. Emil ran out of magic energy to create a teleportation gate. It happened because he used the transformation magic for too long. Fortunately, Sunraku bought a magic energy restorer. Then suddenly, Sunraku receives a message from Arthur. It seems that Arthur didn't admit defeat because she was killed by someone else. For some reason, Arthur also invites Sunraku and Katso to meet in the game Unite Rounds. Although it feels suspicious, Sunraku was also curious. However, that can be thought about later. For now, Sunraku will focus on working on a unique scenario. The last time, Sunraku remembered Vaisyish saying he would train him. Emil then showed what Vasish meant. He took him to a Coliseum used for combat training. Emil informed Senraku that Vasish wanted him to face 10 species of monsters kept here. Moreover, he was only allowed to use a Vorpal weapon. Senraku was already very prepared for it. He understood that it would be impossible to defeat 10 species of monsters in one go. Therefore, Senraku planned to experiment and learn the movement patterns of the monsters. The first monster that came out was a pack of hounds. On average, each was at level 65. Sunraku immediately protested why he had to face so many monsters. Emil stated that Sunraku had to face one species of monsters, not one individual monster. So it was reasonable for the species to be creatures that often group together. Meanwhile, Rhi is seen in her room. She has exited SLF. She is still overjoyed because Rakuro talked to her. If they meet again, Rhi is thinking of mustering the courage to send him an ad friend request. At that moment, Rhi fantasizes about the situation when Rakuro accepts her friend request. So much so that she imagines Rakuro inviting her to go to school together every day because they helped each other in the game. 
By the way, earlier Ri immediately looked for Sunraku and Thurdurama after successfully defeating the player killers. However, she couldn't find him. Rei wonders what Rakuro is doing right now. Currently, Sunraku is struggling to fight a pack of hounds. This is the seventh time he has tried. He can casually die repeatedly because there is no death penalty here. After failing six times, Sunraku feels that the difficulty of the monsters lies in their coordination and teamwork. Therefore, Sunraku is confident that there must be one hound leading them. Sunraku immediately uses the skill Spiral Edge on that monster. Sunraku throws his weapon towards the fleeing packhound leader. Then, the puncture marks are attacked repeatedly, resulting in a critical hit. Once the leader is defeated, defeating the other packhounds is not a significant threat. As the next monster is about to be released, Sunraku ensures whether the monsters are grouped or not. Emil answers that there's only one of the second monster. However, it turns out to be an infected bear with tentacle parasites. Indeed, it feels no different from a group of monsters. According to the explanation, the main body is the tentacle parasite, not the bear. So Sunraku continues to attack the tentacle while avoiding the bear's attacks. Sunraku wins after the bear collapses when the seventh tentacle is cut. Sunraku wins on the fourth attempt. The third monster is a berserk goblin. Although the monster is super strong, it's still just a goblin. Sunraku defeats it in two attempts. The fourth monster is a denobor. When the monster charges at the player, it can trigger an explosion if its snout is touched. Sunraku successfully defeats it in one attempt. The fifth monster is a toxic eagle. This is the monster Sunraku hates the most so far. Sunraku struggles a lot and can only defeat it after 112 attempts. Next, the sixth monster is an armored larva. Compared to the poop bird, this monster is nothing. Sunraku successfully defeats it in one attempt. Moving towards the end, the eighth monster is an Execupanther. This monster is very fast and strong, but its body is soft. He defeats it in one attempt. The ninth monster is a twin head tiger. For Sunraku, this monster is nothing special, just strong. He successfully defeats it in two attempts. Then, the ninth monster is the beta unit golems too. Sunraku needs quite some time to memorize its attack patterns. However, in the end, he manages to do it. Sunraku succeeds in winning after seven attempts. After battling nine species of monsters, now only one monster remains to be defeated. By the way, Sunraku only leveled up by two levels after all those fights. The main reason is the Vorpal Soul Necklace, which reduces experience gained by half. Whether it's due to excitement or fatigue, Sunraku wants to start the final battle immediately. At that moment, Viseish suddenly arrives at the Colosseum. In the final battle, Viseish wants to pit Sunraku against a monster he just captured. Viseish then throws the monster. The monster appears to have a wooden body with many legs and wears a wizard hat. Viseish then explains the background of the monster. In ancient times, there was a group of people who tried to merge with trees to prolong their lives. The monster is now nicknamed the Aberrant Woodmage. Also, Viseish states that the monster is still too strong for the current Sunraku. Therefore, he will set the victory condition for Sunraku. He must survive for five minutes. Initially, Sunraku underestimates it because he is only asked to survive for five minutes. He believes he can win by just running away. However, the aberrant Woodmage instantly attacks with its wooden staff directly towards Sunraku, even though the distance between them is quite far. Fortunately, Sunraku reflexively dodges it. After that, the aberrant Woodmage continues to unleash as much wooden magic as possible. While avoiding, Sunraku finally understands that surviving for five minutes in this situation will indeed be difficult. Among more than 30 million people playing SLF, Sunraku is the first person to face this monster. It takes him a long time to realize this fact. By the way, the aberrant Woodmage he's currently facing is at level 120.